That song's just too damn catchy for me, Lyle. I can't help it. I got you, man. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> uh hey everybody what's going on my name is mark the co-host here next to my buddy lyle how you doing how you feeling better lyle a little bit yeah a little little bit today finally it's been uh four or five days of of roughness but yeah it's a little better today and believe me i'm happy about that progress is better than nothing you know we were talking folks about uh uh the bad weather that everybody's been having yeah, yeah, I had two and a half inches of snow when I woke up this morning, believe it or not. Lyle laughed at me in Messenger when I sent him a picture. <laughs> That's ridiculous. But, you know, all that bad weather out in uh, Ohio and stuff. Um, Creole messaged me yesterday. He said it looked like I was having a hurricane where I'm at. It's just he did, the wind swirls around here on the I-80 corridor. But we had rain nonstop. My backyard, half of it's underwater. Um, oh, wow. it, it's just that time of year, tornadoes. Um, hurricanes, well, hurricanes are in the fall though, right, Lyle? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, they did more and more. Uh, the weather's really stuck. My truck's in the shop. They, I think I picked the right week. Maybe I jinxed us all weather-wise. But this weather comes around pretty darn fast. I know I've gotten caught out in some bad weather, Lyle, where I've had a high <laughs> tail it off the water. Yeah, yeah, I have too. Um, I told this story years ago. I don't think I've told it in a long time. I don't think I've told it on Panfish Nation, but we was on Truman Lake one time, my son and I, and there's a cave on that lake on the Osage Arm. Uh, Now, it's not real big, but the lightning and thunder and rain got so bad that we backed the boat in that cave and sat there with the front of it out of the end of the Uh cave. Uh, it was, the only, it was the only place you could get. We was like seven or eight miles from the boat ramp. And um, the, the old boat I had at that time, it just had a small motor on it. It didn't run very fast. And we just sat in there until it was over. And uh, Tony, he got tired of waiting, so he just fished while we were sitting in there. But you'd be surprised at the spiders and stuff that are in them caves. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I've been in spots <laughs> like that. And it's if, if you got to get out of the weather, so do they. And they, and they live out in the weather. So That's they know exactly where right. They don't want to get rained on it. But let, yeah, let me, funny. let me say hello to everybody in here, and then we can Let's start talking that. about what we're doing. I see Benoit Fishing Outdoors is in the house. How are you doing? I see Bug Man. What's up, Buggy? Uh, cool Arrow, I believe that's a new one. Welcome to the show. Appreciate you being here. Uh, Greg Burgess, what's up, Greg? There's John Boy's Catfishing. We have Oak uh, Oak Slope Outdoors. That's another new one. Welcome to the show. We appreciate you. Parker Pursuits in the house. I may be fishing with Jerry here soon. I'm looking forward to that. I have to give Josh a, a call about that too because he's down in that area. There's my buddy Ryan over at Setting Hooks Outdoors. I'm sure we'll have some more people come in here. But you know what else? This weather, what it reminded me, when I had my old boat, um, the the weather forecast said that the rain was going to miss us, right? I get to the boat ramp. I go to pull up. I start getting everything ready to launch that boat, and it just downpoured. And this was after I had already put the plug in the boat, Lyle, before (laughs) I launched it even. It rained hard for about half an hour before it stopped. And when I pulled that plug, the water must have ran out of that boat for another half hour. I was so so surprised how fast that water collects in your boat. And if 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 your bilge pump's not working, you're in big trouble. You can get into big trouble quick. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think my boat, well, they say my boat, you can't sink. But I still don't want to have to paddle that darn thing sunk up to the top of the gunnels full of water either. Oh, and it makes them harder to load, too. Yeah, we've been having a lot of lightning here, too. And when I was a young man, I witnessed what lightning looks like when it hits the river, hit the tip of Canoe River, um, where my parents had a place when I was really, really young. And that that I don't like lightning when I'm out on the water. So no. And um, something else while we're on that topic, Mark, (laughs) Um, the wind here today has been horrible. I mean, absolutely horrific. And in my opinion, for what it's worth, and it ain't worth nothing to anybody but me, but that's the, the best way to get hurt in a boat is on a on a lake or a body of water that can't take wind and it gets big rollers and it rolls over the back of your boat and sinks them. Uh, so on windy days, uh, I'm either close to the bank or at home, one of the two, because I just, you know, there's no reason for it. And I've never had water come over the back of my boat but there is some that comes over the back every time that the wind blows. Yeah. And, uh, 
people buy them every day and good for them. That's what they want. More power to them. Well, you know, I know guys that go out on the big lake um, in, in like, you know, the 21 foot bass boats and stuff when the weather's fine. I'm talking big lake. I'm talking like Michigan. When right. you're looking at six, eight foot rollers that can come in out of nowhere or swells, I should say, they're not really rollers. Mm -hmm. You can get yourself in, in, in a lot, a lot of trouble there. Definitely. Oh that's, yeah. Yeah. That's and no messing around. Um, I haven't, I've taken, you know, the only time I ever took any, uh, uh, water on the backside of my boat was uh, um, launching on this really steep ramp up here on the chain. Right. But that was the water was super low and the, the ramp was like, you know, like like way more than 45 degrees. But she 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 rolls water off of there pretty good. So it's sealed up too. It's just the way it's set up. But it's still not something that you want to happen. You, you don't want any of that stuff to happen. I don't because I have a, uh, I have a battery charger sitting right back there. Mm -hmm. Well, the most of the marine ones, I believe, are waterproof. If you have like, but still, let's say, how many times right. will it take it? <laughs> well, this is true. I mean, that's another one of the reasons why I bought the boat that I did. It's all the lockers are waterproof and stuff. So, I mean, I looked at all of that stuff. So, I'm always overthinking things and over preparing things. Um, and we were talking about the show, folks. Um, and we we're talking about how to stay prepared. You know, if you're fishing. Uh, even out the back of your truck or car, there's no reason why you can't even use a milk crate and have that milk crate handy and ready to go just with some emergency stuff that'll, you know, help you in a pinch. You know, whether it's one of them little jump boxes, you know, obviously a first aid kit's good. Um, you know, if you got a boat that's of, you know, that's got some compartments in it, you can always keep that stuff on the boat. Um, obviously, and I think me and Lyle will be on the same page with this. It, it, life preserver would be the first thing. Right. Um, you know, I know kid, guys who have uh, kids, they take fishing with them on the bank and I'm talking li smaller kids that don't swim all the time and they'll put them life preservers, even on the kids when they're fishing with them all night in the bank. You never know when that kid's going to trip up or, or That's when right. you got your head turned and he finds himself in or her way into the water. It, it can be not a good thing. We don't want to see that happen to anybody. I think putting life jackets on young children on the bank or in a boat. Uh, whenever they're around water uh, is a good idea. And that doesn't mean that the parent can't get to them, but it only takes the one time that you can't get to them fast enough. Uh, and if you start them out young, they don't mind it near as much as then if you wait till they're 15 years old and then tell them they got to wear one all the time, then, then they'd already have uh, been educated on what you have to and don't have to do. But there is a lot of laws in boats uh, and I think it's Coast Guard, that uh, 15 and under, if that boat moves under power, they must have a life jacket on. That, that I'm not too sure of. I wouldn't doubt that to be true, but I kind of make it a rule. If I got a kid, I, I haven't had any in this boat. And uh, uh, if I got, you know, their, them and their parents in there, I always make sure that the kids have and keep the life preservers on. Absolutely. Definitely. Jerry Parker came up with something, but I didn't want that to roll off the screen here. It says toilet paper, <coughs> but but shirt ripped off sleeves works well in a pinch. Now, I want to add to that, Jerry. I used to fish with this old gent, well, a buddy of mine, one of my close fishing buddies. He's actually been in a couple of my videos. And his father used to wear two pairs of socks. You can add, you can figure that out exactly why he did that. He'd always had that extra pair handy for whatever reason he needed when he was fishing. I always thought that's what pockets in jeans was for. I never heard that. I'm just, just a thought. Hmm. I keep a roll of paper towels and some wet wipes in my boat, but that's yeah. another thing. We'll get to there. <laughs> Ryan over at Set Hooks and Cross and I says, how did them spiders always find to get inside your boat and crawl up to uh, crawl up the top of one of uh, your rods and start making little spider webs? They, they do. do do that. They do do that. I think they look for the highest point and they put those single webs out there. They actually use them like a kite and kind of fly around with them. So they're always coming off of trees like that on his stuff. So. Uh, at least that's what I was told by my grandfather, actually. It could be. Also, you know, it is federal law. You're supposed to have your uh, cutoff switch connected. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I had one go bad. Uh, actually, it didn't go bad. The lanyard to it, and, of course, now this is an older boat. The lanyard to it had a weird deal that hooked up to the thing. 
to the switch and you couldn't do it. So I installed a new switch. Mm -hmm. I still don't remember to do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To hook it up. It's not hard to do. It only takes a second. But who remembers to do it all the time? Not me. I, I hear you. You know what I've looked at now? Now we've had, I've had this talk. I might even have mentioned it on a show. I've been, you know, looking to get my boat set up for uh, Lake Michigan. And uh, if I'm out there by myself, which I hope I'm not going to be too often, it gets pretty nasty out there. Um, I was considering getting one of those. They have uh, the wireless uh, engine cutoffs. Mm hmm but they're like 290 bucks and I'm not ready to spend that kind of money. Cause if you're trolling at three miles an hour and you hit a wave the wrong way, who's to say it ain't going to dump you off the side of the boat. And if I'm using my big motor, it's not like I'm using my trolling motor and remote control. That boat's going to keep going. Yeah, absolutely. So, and if you're steering straight and your motor trims, right. That'd be a long time swimming to catch that baby. If you can keep up at three miles an hour, I can barely run three miles an hour. I can't, run, at all. I can't run from here to the living room. Oh, <laughs> my Actually on the lake, you do use the big motor and the trolling motor. You'd steer with the trolling motor. So yeah. Something hey, Mike. We got Mike has joined us. Mike Irwin, Oak Slope Outdoors, Butterflies and Sunshine, Greg Burgess. Uh, cool arrows, a new one for me. Thanks for coming in, Christina Dunnigan. Um, let's see who else. Have I missed him. Schmeter of the Cedar. What's up, Schmeter? How you doing? We said hello to the name. That is the coolest name. Bye, I, I, we said hello to Dan Thompson. Was in here earlier. We can't forget about Dan. He's a good. Oh, dude. Dan's a great guy. He's in all the shows. Watches us all and. Uh, just a super nice guy. Does a lot of things. And I saw have. fishing with squirrels listening while he's driving. What's going on, Dawson? How you doing? <coughs> Glad I, think to see Dawson asking, I think Ryan was asking how that wireless uh, uh, engine cutoff works. It's just, I think it's a Bluetooth connection, but I think you can set it uh, so you can walk to the front and all the way to the back of your boat uh, without it shutting it off. So basically clip it to your, to your, you know, your lanyard or, or your life vest and, and you're good to go. Can't hurt on the big water like that or any <laughs> water actually. Hello, Gabe. Hello. <laughs> I, I almost up. said it. <laughs> There's a thumbs up from Dan. I'm glad to see you in here, Dan. Yeah. There's some of these guys. I got a pretty good idea who some of them are. I know who that is because he keeps <laughs> using the same avatar. But Look at that. It's okay. It's a lot of fun. But every once in a while, they'll mess up and catch us. and we'll... They're good. They will catch us one of these times. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Back to your wireless thing. I, my buddy Jack Ivy has passed away now. Uh, come up with an idea before we had Bluetooth and all this stuff for um, uh, wireless connection for trailer lighting. And he had a guy that he knew that was big electronics, worked for some big company. And they was working on this, and it worked off of infrared stuff and different different frequencies that would run your left turn signal, your right turn signal, your stop lights, your parking lights, and the beam that would come out would spread like this. So mm -hmm. when you turned, it would still catch it. And they basically had that designed when Jack passed away, and I never heard no more about it. But they had it where it would work, but they were doing a bunch of fine tuning. He just Jack's always coming up with ideas like that. And now they got Bluetooth and stuff, so there's no question in my mind if they wanted to do that, they could. But they'd have to get the companies that now make light wiring hookups and stuff like that to to be involved with it because you don't want them guys going out of business. Yeah, uh, because it put them out pretty quick. And also, a lot of the new trailer lights that are out there, even the replacement ones, are uh, LED sealed LEDs. Mm -hmm. they, they don't go as as bad as often as as the no. Other it, Used to. Pardon me, they last a long, long time. Yeah, so, I mean, you could even get a little bit of water in there, and they'll usually yeah. be okay because the bulbs are sealed up. What's Hey, what's going on, Crappie Day Fish on? How you doing? He's also a channel supporter. Absolutely. So, I, I made a list of stuff. Now, I was hoping the people that definitely in chat would help out, and I think they probably will. Yeah. Um, I, in the... In the resource, I mean, in the description of, the, of today's show, I kind of just listed a bunch of stuff that I thought were good resources or good places to go to get the kind of, whether it's information or tools you need to, to help in a bad situation, 
you know. And the first like list of stuff is obviously weather, whether it's on looking at weather online in a browser or an app. Uh, I listed some of my favorite ones here, Lyle. And, and first off, you know, Ryan Hall over at Ryan Hall, y'all YouTube channel links in the description. He's always right on the money. And what amazes me is he's on the money, usually a month in advance. He was telling us it was going to be a cold April and we were going to get snow. And he was not wrong, and he hasn't been wrong yet, knock on wood. And even if he was wrong, I'd forgive him but a lot quicker than all these other clowns that are out there. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you're not a subscriber to, to Ryan Hall, you'll get notifications whenever there's bad weather happening. And he's more nationwide. Yes. Uh, for, for more local um, sites to go check out weather is obviously NOAA, the National Atmospheric Association. Um, links down in the description. Noah's good. Um, they're no nonsense, kind of high, high level weather site. But if you know what you're looking at, that's pretty good. And they also so, have um, links to uh, river depths and mm -hmm. dam stuff and yep. all, all the stuff that you need on lakes and different things. Um, and AccuWeather is a decent site to go to. And now these are just websites. Now, most of us use our phones and we use apps and stuff, which are, are proven to be better and better. But again, my thinking is, you know, 20 miles out on Lake Michigan, there's no cell phone signal. There's no Wi-Fi. There's no nothing. So be prepared. Know what you're going into. And we'll get into what you should have in that situation, definitely. Um, some of the weather apps, I did a search online. And the ones that are rated best, they're not necessarily the ones that I use, are there's an app out there, Carrot. Uh, carrot weather. Um, I've used that. It, it's so so. Climb from Noah. That's a great uh, radar app, but it's very like high level. It's one of them ones where it's got like 15 different selections for level or uh, layers to look at and stuff. And they have history for weather and all sorts of that. I actually keep that up on my television here when we're having bad storms. So you guys can check that out if you want. One of the ones that I use. Two of the ones I use all the time for fishing, or three of them, is Weatherbug. That's a good one. That that one's free, and it gives you good weather. It's got radar in there. It's got sun up, sun down, warnings, even pollen counts, stuff like that. Um, my radar, I pay for the full version of that because it does a weather forecast or the radar forecast. It'll play, I think it's six or eight hours in advance, so it'll tell you what's coming your way or try to predict Something it. Something like that. Yeah, I use that all the time. That's a good one. And the other ones that was, uh, Chad brought up the Windy app. That's a pretty good one if you want to know which way the wind is and where it's coming from. I know that if you want the history to use it for fishing success, you got to pay. And I think it's a pricey app, if I'm not mistaken. Like, I'm not going to say how much, but I think it's up in the teens per month. So That would be pretty pricey. Yeah, it would. It would add up after a year. Now, what do you check for weather before you go out, Lyle? I check with local stuff on my computer. Um, and, you know, a lot of people use their TV and use their radio and this and that. But if you'll check, like my computer, the weather channel is what I use. And it updates every 15 minutes. Now, to me, that's about as good as I'm going to get. Mm-hmm. So that's why I do that. And you will be surprised, Mark, as you well know, that how many times you'll check that and boom, it'll change. It'll be different uh, before you before you uh, leave. Uh, you can check it the night before and the wind's not supposed to blow and you're not supposed to get any rain or snow or bad weather. And you get up the next morning and it's a completely different forecast. Yep. Um, and being to where it updates every 15 minutes, that's why I stick with that. Now, do I use other stuff? Absolutely. Uh, the NOAA is, is one of the best, and, and I use it a lot because I can check. It, if you go to certain ones, you can get pick out the lake that you want to go to, and it will tell you what the um, uh, maximum that uh, height of the water is mm -hmm. supposed to be our average is what I go for is average and like Truman 708 or 706 and um 
if it's uh, 730, which it's been over that several times, uh, it's pretty hot. And there'll be current in it. And I like that because you catch the hell out of the blue cats in. Most people stay home because they're afraid of it. They've never seen lakes with, with current in it. Well, once you've been on them big rivers, that, that, that little bit of current don't scare you. And, and a little the fish, bit of current. When you got current where it's washing whole marinas down. That's, down that's a different situation, yeah. Yeah, I won't be staying home when that's happening too. But, yeah, I, I like to go you know, when that water's high and it's up in the weeds and stuff that it's never been before because them fish are up there feeding on whatever's in it. But that's just me. I don't mind. I don't mind a little bit of water either. Now, now real quick, Benoit Fishing mm -hmm. uh, Outdoor says we watch Ryan Hall, y'all, uh, over any local weather app station channel for years. We're in Ohio, and he's in Kentucky. He's always on point. All other, uh, all other weather is unpredictable or wrong ninety percent of the time. I'd have to agree I, with you. I would that. agree with that. Yeah, one hundred percent. Here's a but great Sean, comment. Oh, go ahead. But, Sean T. Outdoors, what's going on? Uh, he says, I watch Ryan Hall, y'all, but when I watch catfish and crappie for some reason, I get, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Schmieder the Cedar says, learn to read that radar 100%. That's it. Here, here's a, a really good one. Have multiple ways to keep your phone charged. Monday night on Catfish Weekly. We had bad weather move in here. We knew it was coming. It actually kind of knocked me out for a minute or two. But you could hear the the sirens in town going off because we had a tornado right, right outside of town. You could hear my phone going off and the one Cindy's in the other room. All this stuff was happening while we was live. Then pretty soon, boom, I was gone for a few minutes. But uh, I, it come back on. It was it got pretty rough. And if if you're out on the water or if you're at a lake on the bank, it doesn't make any difference. And that hits and your phone's dead. How are you going to know if there's nobody else around? Now, if there's a hundred thousand people in there, they're all their phones are going to be doing that. Cause I think in them, them warnings on all phones, a, a lot of, yeah, I, I believe the, the federal ones go, go out to all phones and all services. Whether yeah. They're Amber but if your phone's or, dead, it don't do no good. Yeah, well, that that does happen definitely, and if your phone is dead, it does not, does you no know, good at all. That's a great idea too, Parker. And and um, if you're dry bags, about, there's one I forgot of. Forgot that, about. I have Ziploc baggies. If you can't got nothing else, you can put stuff in a Ziploc baggie. And I'm not saying it's a hundred percent waterproof, but it might save your bacon sometimes. Have several of them. And if you don't use them for that, you can always catch you a load of shad and dump them in there and put them on ice. Absolutely. Or save that lunch bag years. When, when I bring my bacon on board, I'll save that bagging. Maybe he's it for something. D. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Evans, welcome to the chat, buddy. He says extra cigarettes and life. <laughs> I, know, I can see where his mind's at tonight. Hey, Jenna, thanks for watching us. You're not going to read that name, are you, Lyle? No. Okay. <laughs> Lee Evans, what's going on, Lee? How you doing? There's Pontoon and Jody. What's going on, Jody? How you doing? <laughs> I know they're knocking us off our game. <laughs> a flashlight's always a good thing. Now, I have listed down there. I just listed um a Midland Red Cross. Mm. Uh, what is it? Uh, wait, 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 uh, Midland Hand Cranked Weather Radio. Since we're talking about weather. Now, you might think those sound out of date, but when you're in a pinch, those things work great. A, a radio doesn't take much energy to run it. And a lot of them these days will charge a phone as well. If you, you know, you crank it up enough, you'll get enough charge to charge up a phone. And they always have a flashlight. They're pretty good. They're pretty cheap. I listed the Midland one down there because Midland's been around forever. And I think Jenna would, would agree with me that Midland's a good brand. Jenny. I'm sorry, Jenny. <laughs> Hi, Christina. How are you? She has um, uh, said the rubber the rubber boxes, airtight plastic boxes. Well, Mark, I've got an old one here. It's it's not pretty and shiny like a new one, 
But that's what this is, I assume, what she's talking about. I think she's talking about like the black, the big cargo ones, or either oh, or both of them. But these yeah. are rubber seals on them. Mm -hmm. There's a, you can take the dividers out. You don't have to have all of them in there. You can take them out, and you'd be amazed at the things you could put in one of these. And when you lock that baby up on three sides, there ain't no water getting in it because they have a big rubber seal in them. I love these boxes. You sent me one at Christmas time. I, I would have showed it because it's nice and shiny new, but it's now in my boat. Oh, glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but and you know those I, gave, I sent out a I sent out a few of them at Christmas time, and I was able to get them at at Jenny's favorite store, which is Harbor Freight. Yeah. They got them there. They got the cheaper version. So you can always pick up something like that there, as well as the kind of like the, uh, the gear tote boxes. Um, just make sure that the one you're getting is waterproof. If that's what you want, don't just buy any one expecting it to be waterproof <laughs> without making sure that it is farm and fleet tractor supply sells them. Oh, yeah, you know, them. Yeah. You got the loadout boxes from like Yeti, which are ridiculously expensive, but I'm sure they're a pretty good. Oh, quality they're product. good. Yeah, yeah, same with Pelican. Pelican boxes are good, so you can always keep an eye on uh, Facebook Marketplace. If you want to pick up something a little higher end like that, you might be able to find one on there. Right. It says Menards has little ones at Camp RV section. Cool. Good to know. Yeah, it is, because uh, we have two Menards in Springfield. And the world's smallest Walmart. No, that's, oh, in no, that's, that's in Buffalo. Sorry. Yeah, you don't you don't go to Buffalo to look for one. Of I got four Menards within like eight miles of me, Lyle. I get the, you can't go to, to <laughs> Small Mart and get one of them boxes. They don't have them. They got the cheapies, but they don't, they don't have the quality I, stuff. I got a story for you here real quick. Now that you mentioned Menards, it always reminds me of my buddy Mike. Me and him uh, went to uh, Home Depot to pick up some building supplies. We were, we were working on his back deck, right? And we brought his youngest daughter at the time. She's a teacher now. We were just talking about teachers, but that's... Yes, we were. <laughs> she must have been, I don't know, four years old. And we're walking through the aisles at Home Depot, and she's singing the Menards song. Say, big money woman. Oh, my goodness. Everybody was laughing so hard. But every time I hear Menards, it reminds me of her. Of Ash. I can tell you a joke about that. It's not really a joke. It's a fact. Shoot. I am a Ford fanatic, as you well know. As far as I'm, I'm concerned, sorry. you're either driving a Ford or you're driving, walking, pushing something else. That's the way you, I feel. You have, you have my sympathy. I understand. <laughs> my father-in-law is to the extreme with chivalries. And one year at Christmas time, we was walking through the stores, my mother-in-law and him and Cindy and I, and we're walking through the store, and he's in the aisle over for me singing the Chevrolet song, and I'm in the other aisle walking down it singing the Ford song, and people looked at us like we was complete idiots, and we neither one give a damn, you know? Right. <laughs> It was pretty funny. I, I remember that for a long. We also, at, I think, I'm not sure what the same year, my brother was going to buy his grandson a uh, electronic Bigfoot thing that you ride around for kids. Oh, okay. Oh, like one of them little, uh, little truck. cars, right? Yeah, it's a truck, electric truck. That's when he first came out. It was Aaron Wayne. He's a 30 probably now. Anyhow, it was on a shelf where you couldn't get it down. Mark and I got that thing down, fired her up, and I wrote it all over that store. <laughs> uh, and we and we didn't get no pictures of that, Lyle. No, that was too long that. ago. You would... <laughs> That's some of the crazy stuff we did. Christina says, I use spill-proof Tupperware-type containers. Great for leftovers or, or a trip out on the boat, definitely. Yeah. I use them too. I actually, um, for like my plastics, I measured them up and they're all sealed. They got the nice watertight seal. So not only do my plastics don't dry out, no water gets in there. If you get water in there, it just makes makes everything bad. So My buddy John Nordyke has a Tupperware uh, type bowl with a lid on, sealing lid on it that he keeps in his uh, cooler. And that's where he puts his cut bait. Once he cuts it, if he's not using it all, he puts it in that and then sets it in his cooler. It stays cold, good. You know, next time you want some, you just put it out. And then when he cuts it up again, he'll put it cut up enough that he can put some back in there. And you don't have to cut it up every time. Uh, he's been doing that for years. And I, I've fished with him a lot. And I can't tell any different than that. And fresh cut up, once it's been cut up, it's any juice or blood or anything, you just pour it in there with it. Yeah. 
Um, Benoit Fiction says, tell <laughs> someone where or when you're going. One hundred percent. That is great advice, right there. Yeah. Now, uh, my wife is not a texter at all, or a phone or phone person. So I could be out on the water for 20 hours straight and I won't hear from her. It's not like she's worried about me or nothing. I can't say I blame her too much either. But it's not that. It's because I grant her access to check in on me and she does through the phone. So you can use Apple tags. You can use phones. There's apps out there mm -hmm. too. I don't know any of them offhand, but I'm sure the people there. So if you got someone that you, you, you care for pretty much and they spend a lot of time out in the outdoors, you might want to uh, see if that's an option for you guys. They even sell, you know, tags for pets and stuff for hunting dogs. You can use it. I actually have a tag in my boat and she's got access to wherever I have my phone. So I yeah. would like to know how that works because I've not heard of some of that stuff. But that's a great idea because um, there's a few places that I, I don't take the boat because there's not a place to put it in uh, or enough water. But I go fishing for bluegill and stuff on a bank and no phone signal, no nothing. And and Chad and Jockery, they've been I've took them out to these places. So you, there's you just if something happens, you're just there until somebody comes along. I know a lot of these new phones. If you're if you need help, you can use satellites to use them. Like I know my Apple phone, my iPhone. It, if you have no signal, like that time when when AT and T went down, it did have access for emergencies via satellite, which is kind of handy to have. Oh, that's that's good too. There, there's uh, there's there's items like inReach and stuff, which aren't very economical. But if you spend that much time in an in out of reach areas, you might want to consider looking into something like that. Definitely. Extra flash, extra badge for your flashlight. That's that's very good. Yeah, a lot of a lot of these like higher end flashlights, like the stream lights and stuff, uh, and the O lights, they're rechargeable. So if you have that extra power pack, you know, one of those power bricks, you can always charge it in a hurry. And a lot of these newer ones, they'll charge eighty percent in like fifteen minutes. You you can't go wrong with something like that too. That's that's very true. Christina says. Ask Josh if I really use kitchen Tupperware as a dry box when we go out on the boat. He'll tell you that I do. Uh, I'm quite sure of that. I, I'm oh, quite yeah. sure that it would. Um, Ryan says, 20 hours, my phone will be dead for my wife calling and texting. <laughs> Oh, one time, you know, she's got the ability to know where I'm at. I was out fishing. We stopped at this little tavern on the water called Broken Oar. I did get a call that time. She's like, what are you doing at the Broken Oar? I thought you were fishing. I says, well, taking a break, dear. <laughs> Life 360 is a good location app. I'm not I familiar think, with that. Do you know anything about it, Mark? Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's the 360. I know my buddy, that guy I was telling you about, Mike, I believe he that's what he uses with his family and and some other friends of ours. They all keep in touch with that. They got kids at college, so they're they're able to know that their kids are safe, you know, a young yeah. young lady and and obviously their son. So they they, they keep track of everybody that way. Good so. deal. Jody says she keeps a tote yep. on a boat with blankets, towels, extra clothes, hand warmers, extra lighter, emergency blankets, drinks. Food, lighters, whistles, glow sticks, knife, tarp, solar charger, help sign. She that just happens. she just ruined the rest of our show. Good night, everybody. We got nothing left to talk about. I like that help sign. That's something that I had not thought about. But if you have one of those, you could just hang it off the side of your boat. People going by, maybe yeah. they'd see it. I mean. I think that's a fabulous idea. Me, I just stand on a bar. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. That's that's a good. That's all good stuff that you got there, Jody. One hundred percent. Um, I'm looking through my list here. Um, I got lists like best rated hand, um, headlamps. Headlamps are always good because you can keep your hands free. Obviously, we yes. all know that as, as you know, as fishermen and cat fishermen, especially headlamps are, are priceless. Um, I didn't do any research on which ones. Those are just the best ones that are listed on Amazon. I got one that uses a rechargeable 18650 lithium that lasts forever. And I always have a battery charger. I use a lot of rechargeable batteries, Lyle. So I got a charger actually here on my desk that like, uh, um, this is my stream light that I keep in my pocket at all times. As you can tell, it's 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 worn. I won't light it up because it'll, 
I don't want to have it strobe on anybody. It's Those are real bright, bright, right? Yeah, these are super bright. Yeah, um, I got AA batteries. I care. Yep, one of those. The old I've got uh, a mag light, but mag it's light. not near bright enough as bad as my eyes have got. I need something brighter. <clears throat> but I go out and check my live traps with that one. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that, right? We're going to let this fly. All right. So we went over to handcraft yeah. ra weather radio. That's never a bad thing to have. I actually have a. Um, you know, my wife, anyway, I knew somebody that worked for Snap-on Tools, let's say. <laughs> and uh, they they were always giving away like little trinkets, you know, like keychains and coffee cups and can koozies, you know, like companies do. Mm -hmm. um, and I got a, fla a hand crank flashlight slash weather radio combo that they had were given away uh, at a golf outing, I think think because she was in charge of buying all that stuff and we got this thing 18 years ago and I, I tried it out last night it still worked wow so there you go and it's a, it's not anything special it's like a freebie giveaway chinese thing but it worked hey that's all i asked today's work and it only basically chances are if you get an emergency situation it's only going to happen to you once so mm -hmm. really if it works one time, that's when it counts. Buckeye Catfish and welcome. It says, I vacuum packed extra blankets and a change of clothes compressed down really small. That's a great idea. It is because them things will get so small when you get the air out of them, they don't take up hardly any space at all. And you can either put a box or a, a waterproof box or something in there to put that stuff in. There's always a hole you can stick stuff like that in for emergencies. Always. There's Richard from Fish and Freedom. He says, if you're going to be on a river with commercial traffic, a VHF marine radio is a great idea. I agree 100%. 100%. And I, you see, I don't fish on river with commercial traffic, so I didn't even think about that. I, You know, I'm thinking Lake Michigan, Lake Michigan and stuff, but the commercial traffic, yeah, you can get in on whatever. I think it's, is it Channel 16 that they, and it's not a CB channel. I forget what the frequency is for marine. Jen, <laughs> Jenny would know. Probably. Yeah, great idea, and uh, you can get handheld marine radios too, which aren't mm -hmm. I don't think they're 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 pretty cheap. So, yeah, they're not Here, too bad. Here's one thing that I keep, you know, and and another thing. I, I'm a little side note here. You know, we're having that eclipse on Monday, right, Lyle? Mm -hmm. and they say it might be the end of the world because they're starting up the hedron collider on that day too. You know what the hedron collider is? No, it's that big portal to another world they have over in CERN in Europe. The the Atom Smasher that everybody it sounds like with. something they come up with on the Big Bang Theory show. But pretty much it is definitely science, but they're doing that and they're whatever. So that's another reason why I said this. Um and, and because this one's gonna sound kind of odd to have on a list. I have a lot of those life straws here at home that I got on some deal back in the day. Uh, it can't hurt to have one of them on, in your boat. If you need to get fresh water or clean water, you can always use them. I got the one where you fill up a bag and you force it through the life straw and you can fill up whether it's a Nalgene bottle or, or you know, a tumbler or whatever you, with cold water if you need or uh, clean water if you need it. Josh, the weekend angler says channel 16 is calling channel. Okay. 13 is low power bridge to bridge. Commercial traffic monitor. Here's both. both. Okay. Let's see what Jerry has to say. It says Mark's light is compact enough to keep in his prison wallet extra space on the. What is he talking about? <laughs> well, I'm not going to elaborate on what I think he's talking about at all. <laughs> hey, Guerrero. How you doing, a dry bag on for rafting. Up, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to so click I on that. Filled one. with an extra gear to keep dry. Yep, very good. Josh says, if you find a handheld weather radio for sale that has the same alerts by specific county, buy it. They're getting hard <laughs> to find. That's probably good information right there. Good tip. Good. Yep. 
let's see what else we got on this list anybody uh make sure oh, dry bag for rafting filled with extra gear that's yeah dry bags definitely here's one that people might not think of if you take medication on a regular basis take some with you you don't know if you're going to be gone overnight and a lot of people if you have something like diabetes or a heart condition you know blood pressure you need you know thinners um you're going to want to take that stuff with you so I, um, I think that's enough said right there especially you should have it regardless but especially if you're night fishing because if you don't start up out there for any reason at night you're spending the night mm -hmm. and chances are what's the odds of somebody stopping by at night and help me out i mean you, you, I, I would and you would but how many other people actually would if some people you don't know i mean it's a dangerous thing to do I've got all sorts of stories about fish of the banks here on the river, which is, we won't get into it, but yeah, prescription medication definitely is probably a good idea to keep a little extra with you or okay. take with you. You don't know if you're there, especially if you have, let's say some people have heart conditions. You want to make sure you're bringing your nitros with you and stuff like I'll that. I'll tell you so. something else you need is sun blocker. That's a good one. Being a fair skin feller like I am, I burn really bad and really quick actually. So if I go mow the yard, I get burnt. And the older I get, seems like the more it's happening. So sunblock. Did say, wait, did you say mow the yard? Mow the yard. I'm fourth. It'll be the fourth <laughs> mow this week. I'd, I rather, sho I'd rather shovel snow two more times than start cutting grass already. Dude. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Folks. My yard's ready to mow right now. I ain't kidding you. But yeah, it. Um, sun blocker, you, you don't want skin cancer. You really don't. So uh, the easiest way for me to do it is to have it sitting on the sink when I go into the bathroom before we get ready to go, and I'll put that stuff on me because if I don't leave it sitting out, I'll forget to do it, and uh, we usually keep some spray stuff in the boat. It seems to work okay. But the stuff I use is a, the PSF 50 or whatever it is for mm -hmm. kids that's because PF. that gets you the most blocking ability. If it works for babies and stuff, that's what I want on me because this old babe needs needs protected. You know, I don't want them burned and stuff. I had something taken off my face a few years ago. It had nothing to do with, with that. But it really, really caught my idea of what could happen because I have – so much burn potential anyhow. And Cindy's had several things taken off her face for that. And, uh, you know, you know it's just something you need to do. That's probably right up there with a, with a, with a life jacket, to be honest, on a boat at least. I think so. Yeah. If you're going to be out there, there's little production, even under a Bibney cover, you get all that, that sun off the water and stuff. It, it, it can, yeah, really the and wind really will burn you the same way. Oh yeah. Heck yeah. That that's for sure. Colero says a simple AM FM radio can come in handy for local weather. 100%. That is true. Here's another good one. Water, water, stay hydrated. Very good, Buck. That's exactly right because um, the less the less water you have in your, your system, the more things can go wrong. It's just the way it is. And if you don't do that iodine tabs, or, or like one of them life straws will help you in a pinch too. Yeah. Because I, I would have no problem drinking water out of whatever river I'm fishing. And if I'm eating fish out of there, them life straws do a pretty good job or or whatever. There's all different kind of options there. Look there at is. Yourself, so. There is. Um, you can always have your, your cut bait up in there and drain some of that out and drink it if you have to. Yummy. Get a little calories out of there too. Oh, there we go. Bug spray. That's a good one, Ryan. Oh, yeah. That is good. That is good. I've been using a, um, what the heck? I can't remember what they're called again. You know, the ones that uh, uh, you, you that burn with the um, butane? Yeah. Yeah. Those work pretty good. They're ones that are yeah, hundreds. I got, I got on, one. What are they called? I said they work good on skeeters. They do. I keep one in my boat, and I usually, if I'm night fishing, I'll start that. But I'll They just... saved me when I was bow hunting and deer hunting all the time in a deer stand at night, early fall. The mosquitoes would get up on you, and you could fire that baby up, and 
it, it just they just work and they don't put out much odor or anything. But they just work. What is it they call them damn things? Guys, what are those hunt things that Jerry would know? I forget. He would. I'm sure Thermacell. he's got Thermacell. Thermacell, that's it. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Those Thanks. things are great. If you can find one on sale, buy it right away. They got all sorts of different kinds. I well, think they're high anyhow. Yeah, I think uh, Hooks and Hammocks was showing one that was actually even rechargeable, so you wouldn't need the pro oh, wow. canisters in them, too, if you remember to charge them. So well, I'm, I'm impressed with those. They work really good. Um, if anybody ever comes up with anything that keeps those biting black flies off of you, I would like to know what that. We've tried everything. You mean the noceums? There is some. No, oh, right. no, 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 no. Regular flies look oh, like no. a house fly. No. They just bite the hell out of you. They say that there's a... I've I've never tried this, Jerry, so don't get so too excited, Mr. Parker Pursuits. They say that the 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 perfume they sell at Victoria's Secret, I actually heard this on a Duck Dynasty podcast, will keep them no seams off you. So and if I hear that Mr. Robinson's using it, it's gotta work, to be honest. That's right. <laughs> Benoit fishing outdoors says glucose gel packs to raise your blood sugar. If it gets too low, that's a great tip right there. Really is. There my, is sister's a type, my sister's a type one diabetic, and she always has starbursts with her just in case. Those work really. Oh, well. They wouldn't last ten minutes around me. <laughs> I don't eat sugar or candy hardly ever. I dearly love them things. That's if I buy I mean. one, I'm eating a whole pack. That's why I had specific instructions on that package I sent you this year. This is for Cindy. I never touched you. Me. I, didn't, I didn't touch it. Amber Romance from Victoria's Secret. That's it. Bingo. We got a winner. <laughs> Good job, W. There you go, Parker. Go and get you some. <laughs> He's probably got a case of it. <laughs> Ryan said live straws. Uh, Stonefly, what's up, buddy? Thermocell, he came up with the name probably before we remembered it. Yeah. Wow, yep. uh, Jerry says those live straws do great. Uh, you can drink straight from a creek uh, with one, and it tastes wow. like bottled water. Be careful, though, Mark. Uh, uh, stop it. <laughs> Jerry, you rotten. <laughs> These guys making fun on Wednesday nights, don't they? <laughs> Uh, there's another one yeah doritos uh, just so you guys know it looks like jerry's into this survival stuff i used to watch he is he says if you keep snacks on a boat keep some doritos handy those would make it in my boat if needed they work as a fire starter if you have to beat your boat so do fritos it's same thing with them any corn chip will do that so really i didn't know that sean t says he likes to sprinkle garlic in his yard probably for the nets uh, garlic will get rid of a lot of things. Richard says, "Round here, chicken wire keeps them skeeter out." That's because of the size of <laughs> turkey buzzards. <laughs> Buck Williams says, "Steve Adams says that Banana Boat Fifty will keep the no seams off, and Banana Boat Fifty is a uh, sun protectant." One hundred percent. I think I'm going to have to get some of that. I just get the regular stuff. But I do keep the spray stuff, which I like better than the, the lotions. That works best for the me. The only thing about that is don't ever get it on your electronics or anything because it will spot them. I worked in patrol in the patrol. I worked in the petroleum business for a long time. That greasy feel. Trust me, I put just enough on there. I ain't getting out of hand with that. Something about bathing in oil every couple of months that may, really makes you not want it. It's a long story. Too much. John Boy says vanilla extract will work too. I I don't know about that. I know uh, yellow sulfur used to get it at drugstores and stuff. Put it inside your socks will keep chiggers off of you. Now what? Are, I don't. But vanilla extract, you put that on it. I know we used to mix vanilla extract with something, a uh, Listerine, and put it in a spray bottle and spray it on you, and it will <laughs> keep them off of you. But as soon as it dried up, it was it was right back on you. So you had to continually be spraying yourself. You know, my aunt was an Avon lady, and my mom used to buy that skin so soft from them. We well, put it on my boys. Yep, spray it on us. Even the the, off. the yeah. screen windows in the house, everywhere. She used to spray yeah. that stuff everywhere. Yeah, it works. Then while out fishing outdoors, says I swear to everything, it's not a joke, or because I'm a girl. 
but the perfume does work. It's a bombshell. I get eaten alive, and this is my go-to perfume and skeeter repellent. Heck, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we know I what got Jerry for Christmas this year. Just got to explain to the wife why you smell like Good perfume. point. <laughs> Good point. Absolutely. Uh, Stonefly says Fritos work better than Doritos. There you go for starting fire. We um, speaking of perfume and going home. Uh, I used to work for a guy's name was Ron and head construction company back in the seventies, and we would take women's underwear and put them in his lunchbox after lunch, and he'd go home and his wife would find them. Oh my God, it was funny to us. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't find too much humor. I, I want you. you that, I want you to read that one for Jerry Law. If you buy the apparel from Victoria's Secret, you can keep other fishermen away from your spot just by where <laughs> Jerry. Please, please tell us how you know this. <laughs> I was going to say we need to see pictures, but we don't need to see pictures. No. <laughs> Oh my God! Well, he says lavender plants grown in the yard will do all that. You know, we have a la a big lavender bush that we planted soon after we moved in here in the front door, and it does exactly that. As when it's in full bloom, we'll have the. It's usually in the cooler part of the year. Have it open, and that lavender comes through the house, and I guess it does repel bugs. We never get them coming in the house at that time. So my, I always thought it was too early, but that could have something to do with it. Damn it, still. <laughs> Call me. All right, let's go on to the further in the list here. I got a big, I got a few more items to go through. Okay. Keep the aerosol sunscreen off your plastic sunglasses. It will eat them. Ask Josh, Josh how many pairs of sunglasses he's gone through. Exactly. That that I actually did know when I used to uh, motorcycle a mm -hmm. lot. When I used to ride my bikes a lot. It, it I, I learned that the hard way. Yeah, I know something I forgot. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. And these fishing glasses, the polarized ones, they can get pretty pricey, too. You don't want to mess but up. I like them. You want to keep clothing, spare dry clothing. If it's cold out, even, you know, in spring or in fall, if you're wet, you're going to get cold. and you, you don't want to get cold. No. Rain gear, obviously, you're going to want, you know, rain gear that works. Um, Frog Togs has stepped up their game. Apparently, um, there's brands like Grundens that has a, a less expensive line, which isn't too bad. Um, also, what is it? H and H sells some pretty heavy duty stuff that'll all keep you dry in the rain for sure. So, just just get what you want, or you can go the way and get that Gore-Tex stuff that they sell at Bass Pro Shops, which which is really expensive. Like uh, they all have their prices. So, they do. I have something <clears throat> we keep in the boat. <clears throat> it's a army poncho. And for ladies that need to use the restroom, you can put that over you and nobody knows what's going on. It also works to keep water off of you if it rains. It does. But um, you can be around a bunch of people and put that thing on and do your do, and nobody knows what you're doing. I didn't need to know that. I'm just letting you know. Okay. Now you do. What's going on, Greg? Greg says, hello, Mark. My daughter worked at Victoria's Secrets and said more men buy it than women. That sounds right. Jerry's still start. Jerry's not, not only fancy, he's a fire bug, too. Look at this. He says, crayons make a good temporary candle. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a Marine, you can. Wait till you get to his next one. <laughs> I'm going to let you read that one. <laughs> I'm going to pass. All right. We're not going to read that. If, if you're listening to this on the audio, you're going to have to go to the Panfish Station channel on YouTube and, and see that one come up on the screen. Oh, oh man. John Boy's wife uses vanilla extract as well, Lyle. So okay, good DMs and uh, small black gnats works well. Yep. Danny Stone says, I wore prescription glasses, bought some polarized glasses that were for over them, but they are bulky and look ridiculous. Does that bother you, Danny? That look like Why is it bothering you now, Danny? Danny at all. 
I'm thinking he wouldn't give a damn. <laughs> uh, Ryan says he does like the H and H gear. That's pretty good stuff. I think it's yeah, pretty reasonable. I hear good things gear. about it. Yeah. Um, fire starting methods. I have. Uh, um, I, I actually was gifted some waterproof matches from somebody I know. They work pretty good. I always got uh, a big lighter in my boat. I also, if I'm on my boat, I got my cigar lighter. This thing's pretty good because it's like a, it's like a, I don't know if you can see it. It's like a torch. You, you could set the world ablaze with this. So um, obviously you want to keep this stuff dry in a bag and make sure that if it's a refillable lighter or if it's a Zippo that you got. Yeah. Um, how hard is it now? Those lighters like you just showed, they're refillable. Um, yeah. How hard is it now to get the butane to put in them? Because Actually, it's not it's not hard at all. I get them at Walgreens. So okay, I, 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 I didn't know. I have, I have I have a torch that I use out in the shop for uh, warming up poxy when I put it on rods, yeah. and uh, I'm about out of that, and I haven't seen any in a long time. So hopefully. yeah, I actually just brought this in to refill. Usually, this stays out in my uh, uh, in the shop where I all am. I understand. So, I understand. Jody brought this up like emergency food. Um, it could be anything in my boat, Lyle. I keep, uh, um, I get, I forget the name brand, but I, I get these packs of a box of 30 packs of trail mix from Walmart. It's like 16 bucks for 30 of them. I always got four of them in the boat just in case, even if I just get hungry or anything. I, a lot of times you wouldn't be able to tell about from the looks of me, but I'll be out there fishing. I'll forget to eat or I just won't eat, but ripping a bag of them open doesn't hurt. If you're in a pinch, that trail mix will keep you satiated pretty quick. And it's a natural thing. Yeah, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff like that, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, my, my wife always keeps a... Um, uh, she likes like granola bars, so she'll keep a granola bar at her <laughs> desk at work, and she always keeps a couple in the car. You know, if she whether she's peckish or or God forbid something happens, you know, or she feels lightheaded, a lot of times I'll tell her to have one of them to get her blood sugar up. So I'll tell you what works for me: Be deer jerky or beef jerky. There you go. I I dearly love that stuff. It's terribly overpriced. I know it is. Even. If you commercially ha kill a deer and, and commercially have it um, processed, processed and have it made into, they, they just bend you over. It's, it's, it's terrible the way they do it. <clears throat> but if you have a smoker or a way of doing it yourself, you can make some fabulous deer jerky out of that. Good and uh, it, it, it really is. Of course, I have a grinder and slicer and all that stuff. And if I wanted to make summer sausage, I could do that. There's a place in Bowling Green, Missouri, Woods Locker. They win everything every year at everywhere they go. They got the best summer sausage and stuff that you ever ate. But, man, they have a deer processed up there and they have part of it made into summer sausage. And jerky is four or $500 every deer. And it's just not feasible to do it anymore. You know, yeah. but besides, it's 250 miles away. But, yeah. That, I've, that's some I've of the been, best snacks there is. You know, I, I make a lot of jerky, and I bring a lot of jerky out when I'm fishing, at least later on in the in the season. It gives you something to do when you're waiting for them flatheads to bite. One thing I'll say, if you're making your own jerky, you got to watch the fat content of the jerky that you're making because fat is in the meat is what's going to go bad. <laughs> Thank you, Guerrero. Appreciate that. <laughs> So keep that in mind. But check this oh, one. Don't, vac don't vacuum seal it or throw a, a one in your boat and expect it to last forever. You know, the commercial stuff's packed with preservatives and stuff. But if you're going to make stuff at home, make sure you're eating it in a timely manner because it will go rancid on you. So It will. It will. Uh, you got to freeze it if you're going to keep it. For it when I used to make it a lot, uh, when my kids was growing up, hell, I never <laughs> It never lasted long enough to go bad. They would eat it. They come home from school and they'd eat it. I, I'd make it every night till it was till we was out of deer meat. And I never had any to take hunting with me ever. I brought two pounds with me out on the bank. There was four of us out there. That, <laughs> that whole bag was gone before we were done fishing. And it was I made it super spicy because these guys claim they like it spicy. So I made it like with a They ate it like it was candy. Oh, they love that stuff. That was so good. <laughs> they said if I ever quit making it, they're going to quit fishing with me. Sons of... 
I, I enjoyed doing it. If I was still doing a lot of that like I used to, of course, they weren't available then, I would have a commercial dehydrator. I'd make mine on a smoker and finish it off. And Oh, Sheila gets so mad because the whole house smells like freaking jerky. Because what I'll do is I'll smoke it. I'll cold smoke it out on the on a smoker for like however long it takes till it feels right. And then I'll dry it overnight on the lowest setting on the other, depending on how much I'm doing, the toaster oven or the regular oven. And the whole house, man, the dogs, um, be, the dogs are drooling all night, Lyle, when that happens. Of course they are. <laughs> Uh, Bugman says there are some places that sell uh, a rope like thing you can cut pieces off light everywhere I've seen that uh, also Benoit Fishing Outdoors says flint and extra paracord definitely paracord is always a good good thing to lash things down with so. it's good to have on your boat I've got paracord with them clamp on things you clamp on a if, if you don't want to anchor and you can clamp mm -hmm. it onto it holds my boat with a piece of paracord and I promise you, I got more paracord than anybody on this in chat tonight. All of them put together. I've got rolls and rolls and rolls of every color imaginable. <laughs> you need me to help you pick some more colors out loud? We can do that. Nah, I got it funny, I think. When Dockery was down here, I found somebody I forgot I had that they call bubble gum. It's butt ugly. I mean, it's terrible looking. But I hauled him off a piece and sent it home with me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Bugman's reminding us that uh, they sell paracord where fire starting cordage on the inside. I've seen that definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I use a lot of that without the cording on the center. So I just strip that out and use the outside edge of it for different things, of course. Christina says, buy your trail mix at Aldi, Mark. There you go. I've been hitting Aldi all a little more too with the, we had this discussion too about the price of food going up. We're not going to get into that. Are you sure? Yeah, we can, but because I really <laughs> don't care. <laughs> Here's Parker with some life advice for everybody out in chat. He says, if your wife is being cranky, tell her she's acting just like her mother. She will immediately calm down. That would not work around here. <laughs> Uh, let's see what my mother all was a saint. I promise you. Let's see. Uh, there's more adult store comments. Let's see what else <laughs> we got on there. <laughs> An emergency tarp. You can't go wrong with a tarp. You can get them. Or you can get a one from like uh, Harbor Freight. They're a little more on the heavy side, or you can get one of these ultra lightweight ones. You're going to pay for them, you know. But they they work well. There's nothing, you know. Cover yourself up if it's raining. Uh, create a lean to or whatever. Do all that stuff if you're fishing on the bank. That's if right. you want to keep water out of your boat, let's say you got a rip and a bimini, if you got one, or if you don't have a bimini, you can use one. <laughs> if you got someone that's injured, you're going to want to keep them covered up, regardless. A tarp never hurts. I've never never had anybody complain that they had a tarp when they needed one. So have you ever seen one go bad? Never. From, just from sitting? Well, yeah. If they're sitting out in the weather, I have. No, I I'm just sitting in a building. No, I I, I, bad. Really? I, I've had it for, I can't tell you how many years. And I wasn't going to make an old joke because I told you I wasn't going to do that to you. My sister passed away and she had this huge China cabinet. With, I wasn't leaving it in the house. So I got it and it, didn't have no place to put it. It was so big. And we put it on a um, on my little trailer that I pulled. And it set out there. And I went out. And it was going to rain. So I go out to the garage or in the shed. Because I knew I had this big tarp out there. And when I throwed it up on top of that thing, it, I mean, pieces of the outside of it just come apart. It was a plastic one. Now. It wasn't one of those, mm -hmm. those old canvas ones. And I tried to tape it up because the rain was coming. And I ended up having to go buy another one. But that's the only one I've ever seen go bad from sitting but I had I know it hadn't been used in 15 years. I've 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 seen them go bad outdoors. Um, I should I got a, a few of them in my garage. I got a I actually have a milk a couple of milk crates, um, full of tarps folded up and packed in there. So if I ever need them, and that brings something else to to uh, to memory. Duct tape can't hurt to have duct tape. Why do I think that's Jerry? It, you're right. It is. <laughs> but um, yeah, duct tape is something that's black. Uh, electrical tape too should always have. Did, did he really just say that? Yeah, he did. <laughs> Somebody changed. <laughs> and there's Chadwick. 
apparently they have a hundred year shelf life. I'm not sure what he's talking about. He's talking about the, the tarp in your age. He's making a jab at you, buddy. Stop it, Chad. Stop it. <laughs> Jeremy, stop it. Jesus. Louise. <laughs> I'm sure I forgot something in this list, but there's a oh, first aid kit. I almost forgot that. You can go out and spend a ton of money on a ready-made first aid kit. And there's some good ones, like for my medic and companies like that. I think that, I don't no, know. I don't think so. You don't know Jerry like we know Jerry. Hey, that's Jerry. <laughs> First, Oscar, you need a Snickers. You aren't yourself. <laughs> Just put it through the hole in the mask he was talking about. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> we're, we're having a serious conversation about important stuff that Jerry's going crazy. He can't be mad Snickers. <laughs> Uh, Lyle, we're talking first aid. We got to keep it together for at least a couple more minutes here. <laughs> oh. This is important. Now you can you can go out and buy an expensive first aid kit, and there are fortunes some of the better ones, like from our medic and companies like that. But they're going to have a lot of stuff. A lot of the cheaper ones. Keep in mind that they're just going to have a few band aids, maybe some aspirin. The cheapest stuff they can get shipped over here, you know, from overseas. Mm -hmm. uh, what my wife did now, I'm not taking any credit for this for a first aid kit was uh, she went onto a site like my medic and found out exactly what was in it and pieced it together herself, had me get a, a decent uh, um, um, a bag to put it in and boom, we got it. Make sure the bag's waterproof. If there's any medication or anything like that, you want to make sure that you check it, make sure it's not out of date and such, but you want, you know, obviously bandages, wraps, uh, you know, gauze, um, aspirin, Tylenol, the things that you use a lot. Um, if you have allergies, you want allergy medication in there, things like that. Um, um, if you're going to set one up, make sure that you cover what, what works for you. So that's the last one I had. That was a serious one. So I wanted to make sure that. That is, that's very good. And here's a um, anti-diuretic pill is always something that should be in a first aid kit. Like an emodium or something like that? Emodium. I couldn't think of the name of it. But yes. If you, even if you got heartburn, which she has a lot of, she'll have, she's got, um, it's like the Pepto-Bismol tablets and some cimetidine and stuff. Oh, look at this. Alcum. <laughs> Any kind of that will help. Uh, but, you know, if you're out having a good time and, and especially if the fish are biting, you don't want to go in because you got heartburn. If I think or, God forbid, you know, well, yeah, definitely. You know, you don't want to ruin your, 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 your day your out trip. in the water. Yeah, too, that helps too. After eating all of that jerky too, Lyle, you're going to need some of those. Probably so. <laughs> Benoit says, been a drill for allergic chick. Howler. Allergic reactions. Don't yeah. take too much. It'll put you right to sleep. Ask me how I know. One will put me to sleep. I give it to my dogs on the 4th of July, or at least the older dogs I had that, that got freaked out, and that put them right to bed. One milligram. Per pound coming milligram. in. Super glue will close most cuts. Yep. That's very good. Uh, I shouldn't do this, but I can't stop myself. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, that or what? <laughs> no, I'm not reading it. Okay. <laughs> Josh, you're bad. <laughs> Bugman uh, says even the deep ones that that uh, that will close them cuts, and he's right. It, it will. Um, I don't know. Oh, one more thing I forgot. I can't believe I forgot this because I always got a a pocket knife with me, and I always have a multi tool with me. Now, multi tools are a great asset. Now, listen. You know, when you hook yourself past the bar, people are saying you should have bolt cutters or something. You know what? The easy way of doing it rather than ha having to carry bolt cutters around in your thing is use your multi-tool and crush the barb. You can crush the barb. You can turn the barb off and that hook will back right out. So that's yeah, why will. I've done that before. That's probably my tip of the night for for uh, That's a great stuff. one, too, because you, uh, the hook or the barb is what keeps you from just getting it out. Yeah. And, you know... You and I tie a lot of jigs and stuff, and so does James and Chad and mm -hmm. uh, Josh ties a bunch. If you watch any tying videos, especially if you're watching something the trout guys do, and for them, jigs and flies is a huge deal. 
they all don't buy those real expensive hooks um, that come barbless because they, for some reason, they're a specialty thing for mm -hmm. fly tires and jig tires. But anyhow, you can, you can, a lot of them guys just bend the barb down so it does less harm to the fish. And I got that. It works for that, but it especially works if you get one in your hand. But keep a pair of, of or keep a, a length of braided line in case you do, put it around the hook backwards. Push down on the front of the hook, and you can jerk it right out of your hand. 100%. There is bad. I've done it to myself. It's a little hard to do to yourself, but you can do it. But if you got somebody with you, you just do it. Uh-oh, we're having pictures taken. I took a picture because someone's yelling at me for not answering the phone. I wanted to explain to them what I'm doing at that time. <laughs> I figure rather than type it out, I just send that person a picture. There you go. <laughs> Big dummy. There's Creel. What's going on, Jeremy? How you doing? Um, so I don't know. I'm sure I'm sure I left some things out. There's only so much we can fit in an hour. I mean, we went over tonight too a little bit. I know that uh, uh, a lot of people in chat enjoyed this, and and I think you know the fishing community in, in part. You know, we fish for a lot of reasons for sport. Um, stay connected with the with our past where people used to fish solely from food. I'm a firm believer in that, um, to, to, to survival and getting through hard times. So yeah, if you're prepared, you can get through stuff, probably hopefully unscathed and, and hopefully you guys put yourself together some sort of emergency kit that you never have to use. That's all I'm going to say. That's exactly right. It doesn't matter what it's in it and what it costs. If you never have to use it, that's the best thing that could ever happen to you. Never have your – and if you can keep yourself out of a bad situation, do it. Yep, 100%. You know, that, that's one one of the things, especially younger folks. I'm not so bad about it now. Back years ago, it didn't make no difference to me if it was raining. I didn't care if it was lightning. If the fish was biting, I wouldn't go nowhere. Well, it's not so much like that these days. Mm -hmm. It's just the older you get, the wiser you get. Or, or a lot of people out there have kids. You yeah, know, make, make it home to their families and stuff. You know, a lot of people got to keep exactly. that in mind. You know, people are dependent on you. So go out and have fun, but make sure you come back to them and, and you fulfill whatever you got to, you know, your, right. your obligation it, to, your, to your family. Because someone someone's going to miss you, even yeah. Jerry Parker. Even Jerry? You sure? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure I'm anymore. Let's add one more here at the end. He says, first aid and CPR training. If you're not certified, find a class. Uh, it'll save someone's life eventually. That is very good information, Jeremy. Thank you. You know, Jerry's always claiming that he wants to do CPR on some of the guys out there. Not me. I think he wants to do it to Parker. Well, to himself. Mouse to mouse. That's what I was talking. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. We got mixed up. <laughs> That's so wrong. You know, and another thing here, let's see another thing that keep coming up. There's apps out there, apps out there um, that have uh, um, a database of what to do in emergency, you know, first aid apps, things like that. At least you'll have something that, that that's good. Download the PDFs because if you don't have a, um, a, cell, a cell signal, you, you won't be able to download it anyway. So it's good to have that stuff saved on your phone or your device. Remind me we're done here, Mark. I have an idea for a show we need to talk about. I, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. Whatever you want to do, I'm here for you. Well, I think it will be a good one. We have to contact some some of our chat people that will help. Yes, I, know, I knew you was, and, and, and that's great. Um, Jerry, that's another, don't let Jerry great. know. He'll be calling you for personal training, Creel. Be careful. Don't don't answer the phone when he calls. He, he want to be the crash dummy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. We'll we'll talk about that uh, that show idea and see who we can get involved. I think we'd have a lot of fun. Oh, I think so too. I, 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 in fact, I know we will, and it, it's something that everybody should know about. 100%. So stay tuned, folks. Absolutely. Well, thank, thank everybody you. for tuning in tonight. We had a great show, a lot of information shared. Mark done a really good job. He done a lot of research, put this together. Um, so I thought it went really I, well. Maybe 10 minutes or so. I ain't going to lie. Well, that's that's a lot more than I did because I haven't felt like doing anything since Saturday. So there we go. But um, the bait shop tomorrow night with Freddie and Brian B and Chadwick. Yep. No, I've, and I've Chris, they've added Chris now. Uh, yep. I'm not sure what they'll be talking about. I doubt very seriously if they know what they're going to be talking about. 
but they're going to be on. So you check them out. Uh, Friday, who is it? Stan and Jody? Stan, Stan and the crew on uh, 7 p.m. Standard Time. And then Jody has her Friday fishing with friends deal. Saturday, I believe Brian B. on a couple of channels. You'll have to forgive me which one. They're having some sort of Uno tournament. And, of course, Catfish Weekly on Monday. Catfish Weekly will be hosting three seminars from Ted Ellenbecker this Saturday. You want to be sure to tune into that. We'll get a thing posted up telling what time it starts. I'm pretty sure that we've already got the. I'm pretty sure the thumbnail is made. Chad made a thumbnail for it and and everything. And we will go live and broadcast those three seminars. Uh, he's doing those for the conservation department. I forgot the name of it in South Dakota, and it will be live. Uh, so it's going to be really good. We're just going to broadcast them across YouTube for him. So uh, that should be a good time. Ted's a great speaker. And yes, he says he's got a lot of new information to add to some of the old stuff. And then he's got different a new seminar to, to put in here. So be sure to tune in for that. I believe it starts around noon. Yep. Ted's a treasure, folks. Um, I had him on my channel a while back, and I still get comments on the video of people that like to watch it. So make sure you, yep. you tune in to him live on, on Catfish Weekly this Saturday. What time is it starting? Uh, Lyle, do you know? I think noon, but I could noon, be off here, right? Noon, our, noon Central Standard Time, if I'm not mistaken. Buck Williams says Hog Leg is doing his last show for a while this morning at 5 a.m. Did not know that. I okay. starting an hour late, or is, oh no, that's on the. Hope East everything's Central. all right with him. Oh, he's taking some time off. Absolutely. Thanks for reminding us, Buck. So Good. if you want to go, you know, wish him well and, and tell him that we're going to miss him until he comes back, make sure you're there. I'll, I'm going to probably set my alarm and get up a little early and do the same. I so. hope I get wake up in time to watch a little bit in the morning, but here lately I have not been. So, uh, Bugman says CPR has changed in the years. It is not the same as the one he took in 1983. And I understand that too. Yes, Ted, uh, Chad said stream is set up, it's so I'll go yet. ahead and, and uh, try to get that promoted a little bit because Ted's doing it. It'll be really good. If Ted's doing it, you need to listen to him. I, it doesn't really matter what else is going on. But he's kind of like EF Hutton. <laughs> when he's talking, you need to listen. So, wish people thought that about me. What would you say? I wish the people thought that about me. What would you say? Nothing. All right. <laughs> I hear, I hear you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll be back next Wednesday night with a new show. Be sure to tune in at 7 Central. See you then. Good night, everybody.